In this segment, we'll discuss the graphical representation of the Lorentz transformation using the so-called Minkowski diagram. So, as before, we'll be dealing with the uh, uh, reference frames k and k prime, and uh, they're moving with respect to each other in the x direction. So y and z components um, are the same in both reference frames, they're not affected by the transformation, and the things that are uh, transformed are the x and t coordinates. So um, uh, here in this picture, um, the horizontal axis represents the um, x-axis in reference frame k, and the vertical axis, the ct axis in k. Now, um, the uh, curves here, the hyperbole, represent the lines of constant interval. So we'll see shortly why uh, this is important. So those are the lines where ct squared minus x squared is constant. Um, and uh, they form two groups. So um, for one group, the constant is positive. For the other group, the constant is negative. Now, as you remember, a positive or negative constant corresponds to the uh, interval um, separating a point uh, Tx from the origin being uh, space-like or time-like. When the constant is positive, the interval is time-like. Uh, when it's negative, it's uh, space-like. So um, the, um, um, the hyperbole here that cross the t-axis correspond to time-like intervals, and uh, those that cross the x-axis correspond to the space-like intervals. Now, a special case where the constant is equal to zero is a straight line passing through the origin, and um, uh, this line represents the uh, light ray. So ct equals x, or x equals ct, is the um, uh, world line of a light ray. Um, there's another light ray uh, propagating in the negative x direction. Okay, now um, um, the motion of a body with velocity v, which must be less than the speed of light, is represented by a straight line here. So uh, the slope represents the velocity, and um, one such object may be the origin uh, of reference frame k prime. So we call it O prime. So when seen in reference frame k, O prime moves with velocity v. So the origin of k prime has coordinate x prime equals zero. Um, so this line then represents the ct prime line of reference frame k prime. Now it's easy to see uh, that the uh, x prime axis has to be this line. Why is that? Well, the uh, speed of light is the same in all reference frames. So ct prime and x prime should be the same for the light ray. Now the light ray is here. When seen in reference frame k prime, uh, the corresponding world line would be represented using x prime and ct prime coordinates. Um, so the light ray has to bisect these two lines. Now, uh, this can also be easily derived from the uh, um, uh, equations representing the Lorentz transformation. So we, we derived that before. So you can see that um, if we find the uh, location of the uh, um, ct prime axis so ct prime according to the uh, transformation was negative hyperbolic sine zeta times x plus cosh zeta ct so if we set this to zero this uh, should give us the x prime uh, axis now this will give us x over ct equals uh, 1 over hyperbolic tangent zeta. Now, if we do the same for x prime, we'll find the ct prime axis. So x prime, according to the same formulas, uh, is given by uh, cosh zeta times x minus 
cinch zeta ct. So if we set this to zero, this will give us the t prime axis. And this was the x prime axis. So t prime axis uh, will have x over ct equals hyperbolic tangent zeta. So you see that the slopes of the uh, x prime axis and t prime axis are the inverses of each other, which corresponds to um, um, to this um, uh, graphical uh, arrangement that we have here. Now let's orient ourselves uh, in this diagram a little bit. So, um, for example, how would we represent uh, the um, world lines uh, of the two ends of a ruler uh, whose length is 1 in the units shown here, um, that is at rest in reference frame k. So um, we can place the ruler uh, such that um, at t equals 0, well, at any other time, it stretches from 0 to 1 along the x-axis. And then because it's not moving in reference frame k, then the world line of its left end is a vertical line, and the world line of its right end is also a vertical line. Um, so everything inside the ruler forms this band here, and notice that the, uh, um, the world line of the right end of the ruler here is a tangent to the line of the constant interval. So it touches uh, the interval um, corresponding to, um, it, it touches the line corresponding to the interval uh, equal to 1. Now consider a moving ruler. So let's uh, uh, take a ruler that is at rest in reference frame k prime. So it's moving with the same velocity v with respect to k. And um, I would like to um, figure out um, how the ruler should be displayed in this picture at t prime equals zero. Okay, so let's again put the left end of the ruler at the origin and then find where the right end of the ruler should be. Now it's easy to see that the right end should be at the crossing of the x prime axis with the hyperbola representing the interval equal to 1. Why is that? Well, um, consider the coordinates of the right end uh, of the ruler. So this event here. Okay. Now, we know that the interval is invariant. So we should have ct squared minus x squared equals ct prime squared minus x prime squared, okay? But we know everything in, in, k, in k prime reference frame. In k prime, we know that t prime should be equal to zero. We observe both ends at the same time, t prime equals zero. And x prime is equal to one, right? The ruler has a unit length. That means that in the x uh, in, in reference frame k, we should have ct squared minus x squared equal 1. But that is exactly this line. So we know this point should be at the crossing of these two lines, which means that um, if we want to put labels on the x prime axis, we should put 1 exactly at this point, and then obviously this will be 2. Um, so this is, uh, if it's meters, this is one meter, this is two meters, and so forth. Now, for the same token, uh, by the same token, if we consider time intervals, um, we would uh, consider uh, moving clocks uh, by a similar argument based on uh, the uh, equivalence of the interval, we'll, uh, we'll see that uh, CT on this axis should be labeled like this. Those are the um, same units as, as, as we use on the um, uh, CT axis. Okay, 
Um, Now, um, both ends of the ruler move uh, with the same velocity. So if we want the um, world lines of the two ends, we should simply draw lines parallel to the uh, CT prime axis. Now, the left end, it's just the CT prime axis. Now, the right end is the line that's parallel to it. It's already drawn in this picture. And notice that it is tangent to the hyperbola at this point here. So everything um, inside this band is the moving ruler. So the world lines of any point on the ruler are parallel lines inside this band. Now, um, with this in mind, uh, we can immediately uh, see graphically um, the Lorentz contraction. So, um, how do we measure the length of this ruler in the reference frame K? So, we, we perform two simultaneous measurements um, in the reference frame K, which means we observe the left and right ends of the ruler at the same time. So, we can uh, take, for instance, CT equals zero. So, then we observe the left end at the uh, origin and the right end here. So this is how the ruler appears to us in the reference frame k at t equals 0. But uh, notice that um, the um, right end of the ruler is closer to the origin than 1. So uh, st the same ruler at rest would, would extend from 0 to 1. And this end here is... Uh, less than 1. So the, the ruler appears to be shorter in the reference frame k than its uh, proper length. Okay, now we should reach a similar conclusion if we consider a ruler at rest in k and observe it in k prime. So um, as we noticed before, the, um, the stationary ruler at rest in k is represented by vertical lines like that. Now, if we measure its length in k prime, we will observe the two ends of the ruler at t prime equals zero at these two points here, at the origin and here. And obviously, the length of this, um, of this interval is less than one. So if we compare this to one, it's shorter. That's the same Lorentz contraction. Now, what about time dilation? Let's consider a clock that's moving uh, along with reference frame k prime. Uh, so the uh, world line of the clock coincides with the ct prime axis. So if we take a moving clock and let it tick for a unit time, then um, uh, it will find itself at uh, this point here. Now, if we measure the time shown by a stationary clock at this point, then we have to project it here on the CT axis, and this point has CT greater than 1. So this means that the moving clock lags behind the stationary clock. Conversely, Consider a clock that is uh, at rest in K, that is uh, ticking for a second, for a unit, so it will end up here. Now the coordinate of this point uh, in the K prime axis, the time corresponding to this point, can be found by drawing a line parallel to the X prime axis until it intersects with the CT prime axis, and CT prime at this point is greater than 1. So the situation is entirely symmetric. Um, the moving clock uh, that is compared uh, to um, a set of synchronized clocks in some reference frame always lags behind 
the system of synchronized clocks. So one thing to um, um, to pay special attention to is how the um, um, frame dependence of simultaneity is obvious in this picture. So uh, events that are simultaneous in K correspond to the same values of CT. So horizontal lines in this picture like the uh, x-axis here, or any line parallel to it, corresponds to a set of events that are simultaneous in k. Now, in k prime, simultaneous events happen at the same t prime. So the lines parallel to the x prime axis, like these, correspond to the set of simultaneous events in k prime. So events that are simultaneous in k, for instance, the origin and this point here are not simultaneous in k prime. So in particular, um, the time t prime for the origin is zero, but for this point where t is zero, the t prime is obtained by projecting to the uh, ct prime axis. So ct prime here is negative. So in uh, reference frame k prime, this event here occurs earlier than this event, but they are simultaneous in K. Another important point to emphasize about this diagram is that you can't measure lengths and times uh, with a ruler. So for example, consider um, an object um, or um, two events corresponding to the observations of two ends of an object that looks like this in this graph. So um, if it was a conventional uh, graph in, in, in um, Euclidean space, you would just take a ruler and measure the length um, of this bar, and that will give you the length of the object. Now here, this is not the case, because um, if you want the proper length um, of this object, you would have to take the... Um, um, let's call it delta x and c delta t. So the proper length of this object would be L squared equals delta x squared minus c delta t squared. Not plus, but minus. So the proper length of this uh, blue bar is actually less than delta x. If you took a ruler and measured that, you would uh, clearly make a mistake. Now, notice this length is 1, and this length is 1, but this one is obviously longer in the graph. So um, you need to be careful about that. Same thing about the time periods. Uh, let's say you want uh, to know the proper time along uh, this path. So it's an object moving from here to here. So if we want to know proper time corresponding to the interval, we would again take the components here. So this will be delta x happens to be negative here, and c delta t. So then the proper time, let's call it tau. So c tau squared would be equal to c delta t squared minus delta x squared. Again, not plus, but minus. So this c tau is a shorter time period than c delta t. Now let's also reiterate what we've learned before about different kinds of intervals. So we have two events like this, so that the straight line connecting them is steeper than the light ray, then um, the uh, interval between these two events, A and B, is time-like, and then we can figure out um, what is the proper time along this interval. That means we are switching to a reference frame that's moving along with the object. The velocity has to be less than the speed of light, and then the uh, time that has elapsed in its own reference frame uh, along this path is the uh, proper time. Now, if the two events are separated like this, so that the line connecting them is less steep than the light ray, 
then this interval is space-like, and then um, there is a reference frame in which these two events are simultaneous, and then the distance between them uh, can be called the proper length of some object that is at rest uh, in that reference frame and extends from one point to the other. This completes this segment about the Minkowski diagram.